Hello and welcome to TV Pro with the Movies. I'm Matthew Jator and today I'll be your host. Our TV Pro students have made videos for various categories to submit to the MOVE contest. MOVE stands for Massachusetts Organization of Video Educators. In today's episode we will be showing you music videos, news stories, and PSAs. Leanne Robinson's music video, Another Day of Sun, was submitted to MOVE and placed second in the category. Let's check it out. Now we have Wild Wild World by Sarah Bourget. Let's take a look. Love works in mysterious ways. Love is putting someone's needs in front of yours. We all want to feel it. I mean, I want to feel it. We all want to feel like we're not invisible or we're worth something. But that's not always the case. Some of us need help being loved or feeling it. So why don't we help them? What a wild, wild world we live in. When money talks and trouble sounds. Or if we strive to find the heavens. Well, no, no. Well, then we got. 
hard to walk through hell Will every crave a change? Why not start today and sing it out loud? We're not going crazy, we're learning to fly We're looking for racers with both of our eyes Maybe it's time to take the monster inside of this wild, wild world we live in. Wild world we live in. Let's go. There's a million pieces missing. And seven worlds to fall. Start today, we'll sing it out loud. We're not going crazy, we're learning to fly. We're looking for answers with both of our eyes. Oh, maybe it's time to take the monster inside of this wild. Great job, Sarah. Up next, we have Shine Down by Joe Eskelis. Let's take a look. If I could find assurance to leave you behind I know my better half would fade And all my doubt is a staircase for you Up and out of this maze The first step is the one you believe in The second one might be profound
the color blue Just like the tower we never built In the shadow of all the guilt When the other hand was pointed at you Yeah, the first step is the one you believe in And the second one Great work, Joe. Now we have 88 by Katie Johnson and Maddie Walgreen. Let's check it out.
Our next music video is Candles by Samantha Lynn. Nice job, Sam. Up next, we have a TV One produced Like a Prayer by Chris Kogan, Matt DeRoges, and Kyle Maloney. Let's take a look.
Great job, guys. Now we have TV4 student Delaney Brennan's Blue Ain't Your Color. I can see you over there staring at your drink, watching that ice sink all alone tonight. And chances are you're sitting here in this bar, cause he ain't gonna treat you right. Well, it's probably not my place, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Cause you look like you hadn't felt the fire, had a little fun, hadn't had a smile in a little while, baby. Looks good on the sky. Looks good on that neon buzzing on the wall, but darling, it don't match your eyes. I'm telling you, you don't need that guy. It's so black and white, he's stealing your thunder, baby blue ain't your color. Not trying to I'll be another just pick you up kind of guy trying to drink you up trying to take you home but I just I don't understand how another man can take your son and turn it ice cold well I've had enough to drink and it's making me think that I just might tell you if I painter I wouldn't change it I'd just paint you bright baby cause blue looks good on the sky mm. it looks good on that neon buzzing on the wall but darling it don't match you right Great work, Delaney. Now we have Fluorescent Adolescent by Maddie Walgreen, a TV4 student. You used to get it in your fishnets, now you only get it in your nightdress. Discarded all the naughty nights for niceness, landed in a very common crisis. Everything's in order in a black hole, nothing seems to fit to the past though. A bloody memory's like an El Tabasco, remember when you used to be a rascal. Oh, the boys are slag, the best you ever had, the best you ever had is just a mess.
Great job, Maddie. Then let's take a move on to our news stories. Jacob Steiner and Matt McNaughton created a news story about Middlebar's own Sean Newcomb. The piece plays second at move. Let's take a look. Welcome to Listen Update. I'm your host, Sean Rutledge. Let's go right to sports. On April 30th, Middlebar's own Sean Newcomb pitched close to home against the Paw Sox. Matt McNaughton and Jake Steiner were there to talk with Sean and asked him about his current road to the professional baseball system. Let's take a look. Seven years ago, in the MLB 2014 MLB Draft, the 15th overall pick pitched on this very mound. Sean Newcomb, a six foot five left-handed pitcher, was just a high school ball player with big dreams of making it to the big leagues. Now currently playing for the Gwinnett Braves with an ERA sitting at 3.08 and 35 strikeouts after his first five starts, he has huge aspirations to make it to the major leagues. In, uh, June 4, 2014 was when I was drafted. Um, that was that was awesome. I mean, there was a lot of hard work put into that from from when I was little through high school to college, and it kind of all that day was when it all kind of re I realized that it was paying off and I mean I never expected to get to where I was. I always dreamed of playing pro ball and I dreamed of getting drafted never mind being able to go in the first round. Even with his recent fame he still continues to hold on to his past at Middleborough and how it changed his views of baseball. At Middleborough with Coach Lawrence and Coach Bags that was just that was just fun baseball you know that was just where I learned kind of to love the game and pitching was obviously my, my main focus but I think that was definitely where I realized that that was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. That's where I developed all my friendships. I'm still friends to this day with all the guys that I grew up playing football with, basketball, baseball. I mean, it was a it was a great experience, great four years. I mean, sometimes I, I wish I went back and maybe did a little bit more in the classroom or something, but I definitely did what I had to do to, to get to where I, where I wanted to go. With Pawtucket being so close to Middleborough, the support of everyone here was greatly seen there at the game that day. Yeah, I think it's going to be more of a big deal, more exciting for the people who are up there, my family and friends and everything that are watching. For me, I just got to treat it like another start. Got to go out and attack the hitters. I got to, I'll be able to see the people before and after and everything, but I got to make sure I take my time and kind of just lock in on what I got to do and the hitters and everything. We also had the opportunity to talk to Sean post-game. Here's what he had to say to all the little kids in Middleborough looking up to him. Yeah, I mean, that's where it all started for me, Middleborough Little League. I didn't, uh, I think I paid, played one year before I moved to Middleborough when I was nine. But uh, that's where it all started, um, playing for police and fire. It was definitely kind of a, a good way. I was in not only just baseball, but uh, making a lot of friendships. A lot of the guys on my little league team are still some of my good friends to this day. That was kind of where I found to love the game the most, just going out and having fun. With Sean's hard work and dedication, the people of Middleborough know he's going to accomplish great things. I'm Jake Steiner from MET. Great work, boys. Now let's take a look at MHS in the Past, created by TV2 student Isabel Perry. 47 years ago, MHS was a brand new school with state-of-the-art technology, a full auditorium, and a senior lounge. I got the privilege to talk to two former students of MHS and talk about what it was like back then. I thought it was excellent, to be honest with you. Uh, we were the first class to go all four years um, at Middleborough High School. My older brother was the first graduating class in 1972. We graduated in 75, and the experience was excellent. I liked school. I wasn't a very good student, so I had to work hard. Um, I also worked from the time I was 14, so I was always, always had a job while I was going to school. Um, that didn't leave a lot of time for extra stuff, although I did play tennis. I played field hockey one year, um, took up too much time, and then I ended up playing um, tennis all four of my years. Sports, uh, to me they were excellent. I was a jock, and I played three sports. I played football, basketball, and I ran track, and then my senior year, instead of track, I played tennis. It looks almost exactly the same. It's run down, um, but it's old. 
It's different in that there used to be a student senior lounge back there, which was really cool. Only the seniors could sit there and you could go there during free period, you could go there before school, after school. Um, it was a big deal. It was kind of a privilege, but that's not there anymore, I've noticed. I had a daughter that graduated from Middleborough High School. I had a son that graduated from Middleborough High School. But to walk into this foyer here, it's like it was yesterday. Like, you know, Harvey Brooks is the principal, and I'm expecting them to come around the corner and say, hey, Mark, how you doing? Are you keeping out of trouble? When the answer was usually no. Two or three years before that, I can't exactly remember, we went to school on double sessions, which meant we went to school in what is now the kindergarten building. We did sixth, seventh, and eighth grade there, and they split the day. So for half of the year, we went to school from seven in the morning until noon, I think. And then the second half of the year, we had to go from noon until five. So that was really awful, especially when you had the second one because you had to go to school until five. So being all cramped up in that type of a situation and then get, getting to come here into the brand new building, it was, it was really kind of cool. We had the advantage of taking like a home ec class, uh, do a little cooking and whatnot. Um, in those days they had typewriting for our guys, you know what I mean, to learn, to go into the to working world. It, it kind of woke you up a little bit because you're 18 years old, you really don't know what's going to be out there when you leave. I think the home ec um, is a huge area of knowledge that kids don't have. You need to know how to cook a meal. You need to know how to balance a household budget. You should all know how to sew on a button, have a pair of pants. Um, I think every, every young adult, by the time they leave high school, ought to be able to prepare at least 10 meals. You need to know how to feed yourself. I actually still, to this day, have a lot of pride about the fact that we were the first school, first, first class, to go through the high school for four years. You know you're from Middleborough if you still refer to this as the new high school which to this day, if I'm giving so many directions, it actually comes out of my mouth. I'll say, go by the Dairy Queen, go by the YMCA, and then you're gonna go by the new high school. And I laugh, because it was 41 years ago. So, I mean, that I graduated. So, um, I think there'll be a, lot, a sense of pride. I think it'll be thrilling when, that do when those doors open, those kids walk in there first time, uh, whether you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. But the fact that you're going to be the first graduating class, the seniors, will be exciting. And the fact that you're going to be the first class in those four years is also very exciting. It'll be a memory that they'll always think about when they get older. I would hope that they realize how fortunate they are to have, to have a new school because I would imagine it's going to be very state of the art. Just like this was when, when this was built. This was considered like really state of the art at the time. But this one's lasted pretty well. But I hope that they take care of it and appreciate how hard it is to get a school built. It's really hard. Now we have Middlebar Rotary by Sydney Madras, another TV2 student. On Saturday, March 18th and Sunday, March 19th, the Rotary Club of Middleborough held their annual auction at the Middleborough High School gym. Many local businesses donated a variety of items that were auctioned off over the last two days. I had the chance to interview Mr. Brian Lynch, Peter Regis, and Robert Rashid, all members of the Middleborough Rotary Club, and get their opinions on what the auction means to them and the Middleborough community as a whole. Well, I think the auction to me uh, is philanthropy, it's giving back. The auction here is uh, all of the money goes directly to the scholarships. private tutoring and we have data that shows these kids have really improved and that's about $12,000 annually on the part of the How do you do We're here to help people um, in the community. Um, we also have a, a new program, uh, it uh, used to be called the REAP program but it's an after school program for tutoring. Uh, we hook up uh, tutors with kids that need it and um, work with the parents too. Um, to get them motivated to do their homework, basically. 
the high schoolers that are getting the scholarships are going to benefit. The small mom and pop places that maybe need some help from Rotary or need something or a community member that needs something from Rotary, it's going to help them because the money generated from this auction goes into that account and it can help anybody that comes up and asks for it and, and applies for it and stuff like that. So it's kind of a, again, everybody benefits, businesses, people that are bidding and people that need the money. Special thanks to Middleborough High School's television production crew and MCAM for their work behind the scenes. Next year's auction, same time, same place, so we expect you to donate to it, uh, or at least call up and, uh, and bid on some items. I'd like to thank the Rotary for their philanthropic efforts on behalf of the Rotary schools. Very important. We have a partnership with them, and we want that to continue, so thank you to the Rotary. This is Cindy Monchos for Listen Up. Now we're on to our PSAs. Sydney Montross also created another PSA called Plagiarism, which was submitted to MOVE. Although it didn't place, it represented Middleborough very well. Let's take a look. Something's not right, Doctor. We saw exactly the same thing last week. Exactly. Why do they do this to themselves? It only hurts them. Great job, Sydney. Now let's take a look at Stop Musically by Serena Grant, a TV2 student. This app is dangerous for Jada, and it causes her to neglect her friends. We and Jada used to be best friends, and now we're just friends. I wish we were best friends again. I really hate Musical.ly. Can I have a tissue? She never has time for her family anymore. Ever since that Musical.ly app came out, it's like my sister's not the same. It's like she's controlled. I don't think Musical.ly took over my life. I think I'm the same. You guys are just crazy. Excuse me, I gotta take this call. Great job, Serena. Now we have a PSA by Jacob Starr, a TV4 student called Texting and Driving. Let's check it out. Now, let's take a look at a TV2 student, Megan Doherty's commercial, Me, Myself, and I. How many times has this happened to you? You want to hang out with your friends or need their help on a project, but they're all busy. Well, guess what? What? Well, now there's a solution. Introducing Me, Myself, and I, the new revolutionary product for those with very few friends and very depressing social lives. That sounds like me! Yes, it does. Well, how does it work? 
work! Simple. Just put some of your DNA into the box, press a few buttons, and poof. Friendship. Cool! Now we'll never be alone! With me, myself, and I, you'll never have to worry about not having help on a project. Going to an event alone, or just being bored. Now I'm my own best friend, thanks to me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I can use 1,000 easy payments and 99.99 for shipping and handling. Warning, may cause. And death. Now, we have a PSA produced by TV3 student Laura Hatched called The Helmet on Your Head. Let's check it out. I suffered a head injury because I didn't wear my helmet. A helmet on your head will keep you out of a hospital bed. Great job, Laura. Up next, we have a video produced by Leanne Robinson, Don't Cover Up. This video won the Greatest Save PSA Contest. Although it didn't get selected to go to MOVE, congratulations, Leanne. Great job, Leanne. Now let's take a look at Save the Earth, an animated PSA that I created. Hey there. Every day people are faced with choices. Should you drive or do you walk? At the store, do you use paper, plastic, or your own reusable bags? Each of these decisions is an impact. Chances are you have many daily habits that impact the environment. For example, do you recycle? Do you make a habit of turning off all the lights when they're not in use? Think of all your daily choices and how you can make a better impact on the Earth and help thrive it for generations to come. Congratulations to all our winners. Thank you for watching TV Pro with the Movies. And be sure to check out our other episodes to see majors, documentaries, shorts, special effects, and more. to be honest.